Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a video on aggregate supply. And just for the next few minutes, we're going to focus specifically on the importance of infrastructure. Infrastructure includes physical capital, tangible capital, such as uh, road and rail and uh, air networks, energy systems, power networks, the water supply and sewage systems, telecoms, and other forms of hard, if you like, critical infrastructure. I had a student who was obsessed with infrastructure and he, he thought the, the solution to most economic issues was to, to build better infrastructure and he did really well in the exam so perhaps this question is pertinent. Why is infrastructure spending important in determining a country's long run aggregate supply? Uh, if, if you can improve your infrastructure, if you can add to your stock of capital and have better power and telecoms networks for example, then in theory, the long run aggregate supply curve shown here in a Keynesian model will shift out to the right to AS2 and that allows a country to operate with a higher level of aggregate demand consistent with keeping prices inflation stable. Infrastructure is important for all countries, both advanced high income nations and also those lower middle income emerging developing nations. Uh, and one of the points I want to stress in this video is that don't necessarily focus on the big, bulky, bulky multi-billion dollar projects. Oftentimes, uh, small-scale infrastructure using appropriate technologies can have quite a significant effect, particularly at the base level of economic development. Infrastructure needs to be resilient and adaptable and uh, appropriate to the communities that it serves, particularly at an age in an age of, of rapid urbanisation, uh, climate change and population growth. So I just want to give you a few good examples you might want to think about and perhaps uh, research a bit further. In many emerging countries, uh, we're seeing investment in off-grid renewables, including essentially mobile or small-scale renewable energy plants. This is sustainable infrastructure. Uh, improvements in basic irrigation systems can also help to improve farm yields. Obviously, uh, a lot of countries think hard, long and hard about transport infrastructure. Many emerging countries are building uh, high-speed rail systems, building new airports. You also need infrastructure to connect countries and to have appropriate border infrastructure to help speed the process of goods and services. Uh, we need financial infrastructure. There's a lot of interest at the moment in the rise to prominence of mobile money systems, including the M-Pesa system, which originated in Kenya and which is now used in many countries. But again, let's go back to the original point. Infrastructure can be basic irrigation and basic sanitation is absolutely crucial from a public goods perspective. Uh, lots of interest at the moment in drone technologies. Could we build an infrastructure of drone technology systems, perhaps to improve the delivery and the speed of healthcare, particularly to outlying areas in poorer countries? And of course, we need infrastructure to cope with the increasing population. So we need waste disposal systems. Uh, all of these things are really important in terms of building resilience to the effects of climate change and population growth. In the UK, some economists have argued uh, at the National Institute that if we had better infrastructure that could lift our productivity, output per worker or output per person hour worked by around 0.5% per year. Well, that doesn't sound a lot, but actually if you grow from, let's say, 2.5% per year to 3% per year over a number of years and decades, that can have a significant effect on the level of GDP and GDP per capita. So one of the debates at the moment is whether the UK government needs to ramp up uh, its infrastructure spending across all regions of the UK and perhaps achieve a better regional balance. Uh, during the coronavirus uh, pandemic, a lot of people have been working from home and parents homeschooling their children. And more generally during lockdown, it's put huge pressure on the bandwidth capacity and the speed of telecom systems. So here's a really good example of how infrastructure investment is absolutely crucial to the daily uh, personal working lives of millions of people who are having to work from home. And just a few days ago, I spotted this news report 
uh, that uh, planning had been given for the go-ahead of the construction of the biggest UK solar plant. There will be bigger ones in other countries, uh, but here's a solar plant farm to be built on the North Kent coast, uh, capable of supplying power to nearly 100,000 homes. Now, there are some environmental concerns in the project, and uh, do have a read of the article if you want to explore further. But I've asked uh, two questions here. Identify three or four possible effects on aggregate demand and identify some possible consequences for aggregate supply. What's interesting here is that infrastructure has both demand and supply side effects. That's a really crucial point for your analysis and evaluation. What might be the impact of this solar plant farm on aggregate demand? Well, first of all, it's an increase in investment, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So an increase in capital investment will lift aggregate demand. May well be the case that as the supply capacity of the solar plant farm increases, that reduces our energy import demand. Uh, we may, may not to, need to import as much gas, for example. So minus M, well, M goes down, that would lift aggregate demand. There could be some positive multiplier effects of this project on consumption. So the investment could lift local regional incomes and drive higher consumption. Those first three points will be positive for aggregate demand. That said, much of the equipment, uh, the solar panels themselves, for example, other related capital equipment might be imported, which have a dampening effect on aggregate demand. What about the consequences for aggregate supply? Well, this investment increases the supply side capacity of the renewable energy industry. So it's clearly a, an increase in supply. Uh, it may well help to bring down energy costs if this leads to economies of scale in renewable energy production. If that brings down energy costs, that will be a factor increasing the short run aggregate supply of businesses and households who use the energy. And I think over the longer term horizon, uh, this kind of investment in renewables could act as a catalyst to stimulate perhaps more research and development to second, third generation renewable energy systems. And over time, that R&D could, uh, could move into, or could lead to a faster pace of innovation. All of these things would have a supply side effect. We might make a distinction between short run supply and long term impacts. Either way, infrastructure is crucial uh, for all countries uh, in terms of sustaining and increasing the aggregate supply and in particular for emerging developing countries where GDP is rising quickly, where population is growing rapidly and many of these countries exposed to the consequences of climate change. Appropriate infrastructure is incredibly important and well worth emphasising.